All right, here we go. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Very good. Yeah, you're all nice, yeah? Happy Great. to be here, George. Happy nice. to be here. Well, well. Ha nice to see you. Very good Listen, to see you. We've been wanting you to play in this house from the moment we started doing shows in this house. Dal, you've been here. Yes. Um, uh, this is a real treat for uh, for all of us, not just because we love your band, but it feels like family. So this, so thank you. We appreciate yeah, this. We're very happy to be here. I think it's uh, probably there's no really better thing that we could do to come back like this than play your house. Yeah. Um, we appreciate to think it. about the history that we have with each other. So. That's true. That is you've true. Been here, you've been with us through all of every little step along the way, and uh, and it's great to have you with this one as well. well listen, you know? I got a lot of love for you, and, this, and you're going to play a new song, which is very exciting. Yes. But here's the thing. Uh, last time I talked to you, last time I saw you, there was no scenario in my head where I thought this was going to happen anytime soon. Who, yeah, made, who, it, made, it, who, who made the yeah? Who made the first call? How did this happen? You know, I think we just like when because we've been playing for the last couple of years sporadically. Whenever we would we would we would just jam like once before the tour or something, just to remind ourselves that we knew the song still. We never really would like sit and try to like work on new stuff. It was just like let's figure out what we're going to play on the sh at the shows, right. do the set, right. and then you know have we've never had we never had the time. No, like it was like you know okay we've got to we got to go and play like a massive festival or like do a tour okay we've got two days to rehearse yeah and then that was it so man. it would just be less practice right? yeah yeah but i think like uh, maybe when we got i don't know if it was like before we went to europe last year or kind of when we got back during the european tour we did last year we we would start kind of working on these new ideas and sound check as opposed to just doing like a standard sound check right and then i think so when we got home from that tour it was like okay well let's Let's really start working on these new songs. You know? Was everybody remember, on the same page? I remember sending around an email, and then there were stipulations, I think, in the email as well. <laughs> like, it was a lot of like, okay, well, you know, we like doing it. I think, like, in reality, what I said was, we've been casually fucking for uh, yeah. a while now, uh -huh. and I'm developing some feelings, <laughs> and I want to keep doing this, but I feel like keep doing this in the capacity that we're doing we need to do something more than nothing. We yeah. need to have, like, we need to give something back to these people. Because, like, I don't think any of us want to play in a, like, I don't, I don't want to just be the nostalgia act, yeah. you know? And I feel like we're all capable of contributing. So, was yeah, every, why not? Was everybody in that headspace? Yeah, I mean, I'd say when we tied the ribbon on all of this in 2012, we were all of the mindset and very accepting that it was done and, uh, and that was okay. And, you know, years had elapsed. I was in Myanmar at an internet cafe, and I got this email saying, hey, I think we're doing uh, maybe some shows in Ju July. This is May. I hadn't talked to anyone in two years. I'm like, For real? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, okay, okay, that's okay, interesting. Uh, not, not like... Not because we weren't talking. Right. Steele was just on a social. No, you get yeah. a flowery yeah. email from him once yeah. in a while being like, oh, I'm in Calcutta or whatever. I don't know. And, you know, be somewhere. It's incredible. Yeah. And so a month later, came home, rehearsed at the shows. But since we've been doing shows here and there, it's just felt really good. And then as that's progressed, I, I think it's just been this natural progression to um, wanting to write again and entertain that arena, you know, of like playing music, new stuff and approaching it in that way. Cause, uh, yeah, I think we listen better. We play better. We have different inspirations and, um, that's kind of where we're at. So it'd be a, be a shame to like not do anything. When you mentioned publicly that this was happening years ago, people were like, the fuck, what did Wade just say? What's happening? And I in, wonder if in my mind, me <laughs> saying Lex on Fire is back, which is a pretty hype way to end a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. It was pretty hype. But I was like, we're back. I mean, we're back on this stage playing these songs. We're back last week in Montreal. Um, like Dal said in Montreal, he's like, hey, like, we'll catch you guys next time. But yeah. that one wasn't the thing that was just like... Yeah. yeah, Dallas yeah. says, "Catch you next yeah. time." But Alexis, Alexis are, are back. Yeah. Promises to never let you down again. <laughs> well, yeah. Fourteen yeah. records. Yeah. Like, You're all tour. moving into Wade's house. <laughs> That's yeah. Right. Everyone, so yeah, our deliveries um, were different. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, there's a big, there's a big pause. <laughs> when he said it, what did you guys think, George? What, like, what did you guys think? When I remember, I was, I was a little taken aback by it on yeah. stage. Yeah. I think, I think we were all like, "Wow, yeah, okay, all right, oh, that's oh, a big." Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'd also like, I had just been uh, like. 
I, I'd just been hired in in a career outside of music, right. and I like had a bunch of people from work there. And so Wade saying oh, we're shit. back, <laughs> I'm like going backstage afterwards, and they're like, "Oh, okay. So are you? Are you like? Are you? Are you gonna quit?" And I was just like, "No, no, not by any means. I still, yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. That so was, everyone from George's other work, yeah. his other <laughs> career, erotic dancing, right? Yeah, was there for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 but he and they want them, commitment. He showed them world. he can do both. Yes. Yeah. You know. Well, I'm, I'm glad that that you're back. The song's amazing. How do you decide? I'm sure you could very easily just go in and play a song that feels like Alexis on Fire. How do you decide what the song is going to be that you put out? Like, what do you want to say? What do you want it to sound like? But more importantly, what do you want it to feel like? Yeah. What was that process well, like? Well, I think that, that one specifically, like, we kind of started working on that one first just because it's it's a riff I've had kicking around for, like, um, over a decade. The song is Familiar Drugs. Yeah. yeah. So we just kind of, it was never really, like, we didn't just, we just never found a way to, to use it before, you know? I think Wade said we tried to maybe write it when we were writing Crisis, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just one of those, you know, as a guitar player, you got some riffs, you're always trying to fit in and they never work out. Yeah. And this, we've been playing this in some capacity, like me feeding back and Dal galloping yeah. on that first riff for, for a long time. Yeah. And we, yeah, finally connected the dots on it. I think just because I had a pretty clear, like, I had a clear vision, like structure wise of that one already. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it came pretty naturally to just like work on this thing that, that we, but I think now, us being the band we are now, I think there's something about where we are now that allowed us to finally write the, this song. I just don't think we were ready to to do that yet. That kind of, no. you know, take ourselves a little bit outside from what we're used to doing. I always wonder, is is it is the is the song gifted to you in some weird metaphysical sense? Or is it just a repetition of time and time and time and time again before the muse says... Now you're fucking ready. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think some, I think that has absolutely happened to me on numerous occasions. But some of them, like Wade said, are just there forever yeah. until finally something happens. Like, and that one specifically, like, I've been, like, these guys can attest. I played that riff and sound check for 12 years, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. trying to get something going yeah. with it. Yeah. And now yeah. it finally, like, just even, I think about the song, um, you know, that song. I was only looking at it as a guitar player, yeah. even when we recorded it, but it wasn't until Georgie put his vocals in the chorus and Wade did that, then I was able to f to, to to find that vocal line in the in the chorus, you know? So for me, it need, I, for me to find that vocal line, I needed them to be there to to sing, the, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's a, just one of those, like, it's only it could only happen if the five of us did it. Yeah. Do, you, do you have other songs? Yeah, we yeah. got, we got, we got, Bits and pieces of a lot of songs. It's just trying to kind of yeah. find the time to work close. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, if if there was a meaningful amount of time that we could all get together, um, I think we could. It would be very easy for us to do that. Yeah. But again, like we yeah. have a lot of a lot of different things and a lot of th like things pulling us in a lot of different directions. So we're gonna right. keep the current schedule of infrequent to our practices, right? Like, yeah. so unfortunately, like that's the way it is, but we're close. And every time we do get together, it's so productive. I think uh, you spend all this time apart. You can kind of build up a lot in your, in your mind as to where you can see one it goes. You can sit with the songs longer, like familiar drugs took a lot of turns mm -hmm. and especially in lyrically, musically, stuff like that. It takes turns. Like you kind of, you know, I'll do a voice note over something, listen to it for a while, decide I hate it. Yeah. You know, or like somebody comes up with something better yeah. and then we figure it out, right? Like, so. What happens yeah. for the whole band? So when you're younger and you start something like this, there is a, there is a, a reckless abandon. There's, everybody talks about how you don't know what you don't know, so you just fucking do it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that you've all been around the world together and apart, you've all had all kinds of careers. I mean, there's the joke that music isn't saving lives. You actually do save lives, right? <laughs> you think about- Come on, it's, you mostly, think of, it's mostly wash and trucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's, not, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's mostly- you Mostly know, wash and trucks is the best thing ever. Uh, yeah. um, but you've all done like different things. Um, so when you bring all these different experiences back to the psychology of the band, like what is Alexis on fire now? And it, it, that is different from what Alexis would have been. For me- us like just this coming together in the way it did and naturally and all these years later like somehow writing music that's heavier than when we started i'm just like we're gonna stay weird forever 
Yeah. 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 Like we can keep doing this. It's super like we fucking can keep doomy. Living outside of society and trying to make art and hang out with our friends and be creative. This is a great it's, accomplishment it's for you guys that I don't think you get enough credit for is people don't realize how rare it was that a band as heavy as yours was getting mainstream attention. That's very rare now. It yeah. was really rare then. Because it wasn't like you were a rock band. There was a whole other level of noise yeah. coming. And with those vocals, that didn't happen. It didn't, yeah, no. You know what? Like, I think like the music industry, like pop music needs to get so conservative and 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 ignore what's going on in your 200 capacity clubs yeah. so that it can build and 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 that can like the avant-garde can kind of like start to take shape. And then when something bubbles up to the surface and it becomes time for that to enter a pop world, it gen generally tends to destroy everything yeah. underneath it, right? Well, we and like or it gets or, or it gets exploitive, like, you know, and I don't know, it's it needs that. You need that pendulum swing. Like, and I feel like right now we're probably in the middle of a very conservative time in music. There's not a lot of people making chances in mainstream right. media. Not a lot of people uh, taking chances, you know, uh, to push interesting or 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 out there outside of art. Also, right? if you think about, uh, I, I listen to a lot of hip hop and a lot of SoundCloud rappers, right? Because I'm really, I just what's happening. What could be more conservative than a bunch of people trying to make as much money as possible? Like they might as well be Chrysler or General Motors <laughs> or or Apple. Like this is a, a bunch of young kids, and I get why. I get all the social context, but it's about the relentless pursuit of wealth yeah. and freedom. That is the most. Small C, big C, conservative point of view yeah, yeah. you could have. So I feel like that there could be another break in. And when I heard your song, uh, a it was super heavy, which I liked and weird, but it was it was doomy. It was stoner, and I went, here you go, <laughs> yeah, there you go. This yeah. I think this could be exactly the fucking tonic. I think f too for us, like we all have so many. We have a lot of stuff that we all agree on musically, but we also have a lot of stuff that we all kind of listen to separately, right? And you know, a, a lot of the times I'll like write a riff or something and I'll be like, I want it to sound like, I want to be in Caius, <sighs> right? But I can't be in Caius. <laughs> I can only be me. So this right. is like me going, can we try and sound like Caius? Yeah. It's not going to sound like Caius, but you can hear, you can hear us trying to sound like Caius. Yeah. What, or, do you, what do you want it to sound like? Yeah. I'm all over the map. Yeah. 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 I'm all over the map. I'm, I'm more of a, um, I don't know. Like Abe Cunningham from Deftones is a big was a big inspiration for me back in the day. So right. I mean, when it comes to the doomy kind of stoner rock stuff, that's kind of one of the big ones for me. Yeah. And then other stuff too, like you know your Bonhams and your that's your Neil Pert's Uncle Neil. Right. You know, would Uncle you Neil. be happy if you if we let you get the Neil Pert drum kit? No, I would never yeah. play that. Like, is there like no. on a one tour? <laughs> There's no like, way. Deep in your heart of hearts, okay. I already like, hate, I want a gong. I already I hate the fact that I have a Chinese symbol like, still because yeah. it's like it's such a loud, it's abrasive. I wish we didn't have songs with it with, that we use it still because I'd like to get rid of it. Get so, you those okay. chimes. <laughs> so you want to be in Russian? You want to be in Kais? Yeah. Still, what do you want to be in? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, beyond all this, I think that. Uh, I really hope that people get out of this is that it's genuine and it's an earnest effort of like our best efforts. It's not that just like we're kind of around, here's a song. Yeah. Um, we've always written for ourselves, you know, and that's, that's where it primarily starts from. And, um, you know, we're all really happy with the song and, uh, that's, that's what I want to be, you know, people to get out of this. But is what's that, the band? What is the band? What's the band, what band that you, you want to get? Like, you wish you were in. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Was, uh, I would say Melvin's. Okay, that's yeah. what. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. great. I get that. Wait. I want us to be the Misfits, but I've put so many woes in our songs, <laughs> and we have a skull logo. So honestly, I think we're doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> George, what about you? Wade wins. Uh, yeah, probably. I'd in the, I'd, you know, if I said anything other than Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, these guys would probably do that. <laughs> we We'd be like, he's lying. He's lying. He, he's wants, lying. To he right. wants to. He wants to. Yeah. He's but it's, it's so nice to be able to, like, over the years, like, we've been able to sort of, you know, I think. We we can all tell each other that like here's what we're thinking or here's what we're hearing and then we can everybody does their best job to try to like bring that inspiration out which is nice like I can say to Beard you know like at the end of Familiar Drugs he does this really long fill slow fill into the breakdown part and I and I I'd be like do Mel, do a Melvin's fill yeah and he'll be like he'll know what I'm talking about and still will I mean? know how to do the rhythm for that yeah, exactly so, yeah. but it's like yeah. those things I think are what 
ultimately makes us just end up sounding like Alexis on Fire is that it's five pretty separate musical brains all trying to make each other happy. Really, it's what it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that that turns into like a bit of a compromise though mm. too like everybody has to kind of compromise and there's always been kind of a very democratic yeah. you know process to making the songs we're all like equal share songwriters mm -hmm. and and you know so it has to get to the point where all five of us are are smiling and nodding to it yeah. you know what I mean yeah that's but that's is that difficult to do in this band yeah it, it it depends on the song really sometimes it's just you can't you have a hard time like translating what you're trying to Fair enough. to yeah. say. And then all of it, but you know what? We've been so, I will say, I mean, I've said it many four times, but we've been so fucking lucky on many fronts, but a lot of the times it'll be, and it's really strange how it works, but like I'll, I'll have a guitar riff and I'll play it for Wade and he'll be like, oh, I've been doing this thing in my house and they just work yeah. seamlessly together or vice versa. That's or, been happening since we started the band. Yeah. And I think you talk about like, is it hard work or is it like this thing, this whatever you want to call it, like inspiration or the muse or whatever. And I know for me, there's like a sound I'm chasing in my head. I hear something that's not there. And for some reason, since we've been doing this, Dallas and I have been playing like the same thing that we're hearing that's not there in two different bedrooms, right? Like yeah. across town from each other. Yeah. Yeah. You and I have both had for a long time. We had the jobs of being on the radio, so we played songs that we loved, and we played a lot of songs that we didn't like. What did that experience bring to this? And because I, I saw in Austin, you know, when you you'd scored a movie and you did an amazing job at that. So you have these experiences with music that are very separate from being in Gallows or being in Alexis uh, or Black Lung. So what was, what did you learn from all that that you could apply to this new ver or this incarnation of Alexis? Well, I think I learned, uh, you know, that, that hosting a radio show is not uh, the eighties movie about hosting a radio show <laughs> sure. that I had dreamed. It sure isn't. Um, <laughs> you also there was a lot, there was a lot of great <laughs> stuff about it. Um, I guess what I learned is to, to just, um, to listen a little bit differently. Like when I was, when I was very young, mm -hmm. I would hear certain songs and be very offended. What certain bands were doing, I found insincere. I would be furious about it. And I, I was like that when I'm I played those still, bands. I'm still there. I'm still there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I think like that chilled out a little bit because I mean, I don't know. I met some, you know, some pop musicians and yeah. just like, I think by and large, 95% of you people meet in music are like, like-minded people. They're just trying to yeah. like write some songs and do their thing. Yeah. Um, and it's hard, know, it's hard to break through. It's hard to break Obviously, there's massive posers out there that are just, <laughs> it's really <laughs> depressing. But um, I guess what it showed me is just like a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. A little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and what does your job bring to this? Not much. This is actually, uh, my life is a ping pong table between, you know. Uh, You're a firefighter. Inter I'm a firefighter. Yeah. For all intents and purposes. I haven't spoken about this much in interview. But... Uh, yeah, like uh, my regular day to day is um, my home and my wife and yeah. my and my kid and and my career as a fireman. And I've been doing it for four. I've been four years full time now, and I get to do all the wonderful, fun things. And it's still a huge passion in my life. Yeah. And then I get wrapped up in it where I feel like I'm that, and maybe I'm not this anymore. And then these offers come down the pipe for us to go do these fun, amazing things, these things that are like vacations to me. Yeah. And I'm standing there at the precipice of the stage and there's 10,000 people or 20,000 people about to watch us and I cross that precipice and then I'm right back to like, oh yeah, no, I, this, I'm exactly this. This yeah. is exactly what I am. You can be both. Yeah. And, I, and it's like, you don't have to choose between the two. No. But it's it's. It, but can you anything, be equally both? But can anybody be equally both? Well, I mean, for Georgie, it's I think it's different. You know, for the rest of us, we all do other stuff. Yeah. But I mean, that's obviously like a complete opposite of what this is. But I think the thing that I'm learning specifically is that this is just something that will always be. Yeah. And it it even if we didn't play again or whatever, it was so much of our lives before, you know, we went away for a bit. Um, and we got out relatively unscathed. Yeah. And to me, because there was no, obviously there was a bit of, uh, you know, 
ill will for a little bit, just based on how things ended. <laughs> well, well, whatever. But we had, was like, not like, right. not, not, like no, not, yeah, not, but not, yeah. not like bad. Just yeah. obviously, hey, nobody was offset or Chris Brown here, right? No, it wasn't like no. that, right? But I think, <laughs> I think because we we were able to experience so much together from such a young age and have this all encompassing life, um, and sort of it ended on our kind of on our own on our, on our own terms. It just remains a part of us. It it's so it's not about putting the hat on and this it's like I think about with what I do like so many people have spent all these years trying to figure out how I can write one type of song and do another thing like the main question I've ever I, I can't believe people still ask me is it what's the difference between writing a city and color song and a lot of fire song nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nothing how, how can you it know, be different but, right? you know what I mean? I, but it, I just happen to like a whole bunch of different types yeah. of music and I like to write songs yeah. but this will, because we have just spent so much of our lives together and we still love each other, and it's more than just the songs, it's the jokes and it's the camaraderie, yeah. Yeah. then it will always be. You, don't, you can do whatever else you want to do, but this will always be, you know? Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I, just one last thing. I, I thought of something even like I don't bring stuff from fire necessarily to this, right. but I've brought stuff from this to fire, absolutely. Um, I, yeah, years and years we spent on the road, uh, every single night, you're in a high intensity situation mm. where you are having to carry out tasks and do things. And you have that switch in your head where like, you know, when it's time to go and do something, you do it. Right. And, uh, and I think that that is very similar to, some, to for what first responders do in some way or another. I said that in an interview one time yeah. and, uh, the guy laughed me out of the room. Yeah, you would get. But I now that, that I have perspective on it, I'm like, no, you know what? But that's bullshit. No, it's it's totally like it's a similar sort of thing. It is well, like it's mechanism. You need like a mechanism of yeah. It, so you're doing different things, but it's but it's it's like the human brain does just what it does. Yeah. So you, there's no reason why you wouldn't do that. He laughed you out of the room. Yeah, and yeah. He, he, he was just, just like he was like it was like I, I'm like I'm like sitting there. Yeah. I mean like. Oh yeah, no, same sort of capacity. <laughs> I'm doing these intense situations. He's like, he's like, in what capacity are you talking about? He's like, uh, I was in a, I was in a band. He was like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here, you know? Like, he was like some like hard case like yeah. union president like guy like you know just you know giving hey, you me the. Just tell him, don't tell you what your experience is. You can have your own experience. <laughs> yeah, um, well, this band is supposed as a safe space for everybody, right? I've, I've interviewed Absolutely. lots of people where band the bands it's toxic, but it's the thing that works. Has this always been safe for you guys? I would say for the most part. Yeah. I mean, we've obviously, we're, it's like family. Yeah. So you have blowouts and ups and downs and stuff. But I would say for the, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I, w I would say. Yeah. For, well, I, yeah. I if you said it, then, that, then I, I, think it's, I think it's a safe space. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's I been think, trying times, you know, like Dal said, like we are a family, like we are like brothers. And, you know, like, like everyone realizes when they get a little bit older, their family is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like the thing is, even though there's been some like dark times and, and stuff, we, we've been through all of that together. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's been so many, like there's, we've been through everything together. We've been at our best and our worst with all of it, with each yeah. other. And that is a part of why we're playing the way we are right now. Right. It's super grown up and it's super heavy. When you were on your sojourn, could you have ever imagined that this is what you're going to be? You're going to be doing these interviews, me and talking to Alexis again. The last thing I would have thought yeah. of, honestly, me and Mar Internet Cafe, just like jaw dropped at the situation of even playing a show again. Were you hesitant? Not at all. No. No, no. I really meant like, like what was said. Like between the five of us, I don't think anyone else, maybe on this globe, understands or gets me as much as these four guys. Yeah you know, through what we've been through and even through like current times, not in the rehearsal space or not on the stage. These guys are in my lives, whether I'm going through shit or whatever it is, it's like, we're super close and there's a, there's an understanding through that. And so when I come back to it and, and I'm able to, you know, creatively kind of use this platform as like an outlet in such a positive way, it's, it seems very, I'm just grateful for it. And it seems very safe and very positive. How many people have thought you were Adam Levine when they see you on the street? Uh, a thousand. A thousand. I got 1,000 when, when DMs. <laughs> I, I can imagine. One because thousand. when he took his shirt off the Super Bowl, I was like, fucking dude, looks like steel, man. He's still stealing steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. totally stealing steel. Yeah. yeah. When, we, when we did the farewell tour, yeah. that's when steel was starting to look like Levine a bit. Yeah. We land in Sao Paulo. I go to the Starbucks at the airport, right? Yeah. 
you know, nothing. Hell yeah, here's a good one. Here's your coffee. Steel walks up after me. Everybody lights up. <laughs> oh, my God. Everyone, come over. Look at this guy. Looks like Adam Levine. Here's your free coffee, sir. Seriously? Yeah. And I'm yeah. just there. Just for <laughs> looking. Just there. I, I'm good for about two free things a month. That's <laughs> Adam Levine. I won't disclose what those free things are. I, that's got it. After the Super Bowl, that's got to go up to four or five. You got it, right? Or it. down. Or down, down, depending yeah. on the Maybe, reaction. Yeah, yeah, the reaction. Yeah, you're going to get a lot more spit in your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Um, what do you want this incarnation of Alexis to be for you? Exactly what it is. Us doing what we want to do when we can do it. And I think that's uh, what we've been doing the last few years. And it's, it's just, it was a, it's, we never really knew if we were going to be able to release anything. We didn't honestly didn't really know, but uh, I think we all hoped it would happen. And we're really happy that it's here, and we're really happy to be able to continue to work on music. I think all of it's it's a very different thing from what we do outside of this band. Yeah. Being in this band is a very it's a lot more of a um, mathematical, creative kind of experience when it comes to the songwriting part right. of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, I know for me anyway, that's like a it's a it's. Mathematical? Oh, yeah. Wow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the demos that Georgie the Alexis the on Fire demo yeah. right oh here. Oh, my God. The go. math ones. So, um, yeah, so that's when we're, we're, you know, it's, we're super excited to be writing again. It, it almost, in a way, feels like it, what it did when we first started, yeah. where there was no pressure because we didn't think anyone was going to listen. Right. We were just trying to make some weird music. Right. And it, it's kind of strange to say that now that there's a lot of people listening to it, but. I think because of the way we've sort of, we've tried to we've set a, this kind of guideline where it's like, we don't want any pressure. We don't want to put any burden on ourselves. We don't want to, we don't want to let any of the stuff that maybe came in when we were at, you know, running ourselves ragged, trying to take it full advantage of this right. opportunity that had been given to us. But now it's like, it's like this, just this, I know it's going to sound super mushy and blissful, but it's just this really like you said, safe place where we can kind of hang out. We just happen to be playing a band together. Right. You know, yeah. like I used to say to people when they asked me if I was trying to like remove myself from heavy music or something, I'd be like, no, I'm just not feeling like playing that right now. But right. if I do ever want to, I know four guys I can do it pretty well with. Did you ever worry that when the City and Color thing started, it was going to fuck up the thing? Well, no. I, 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 to be completely honest with you, when that whole thing started, I, I had no idea that it would do what it did. And right. I didn't know that I would find myself a couple of years into it trying to do split myself in two. I, I yeah. just never could never have planned for that and didn't didn't think about it, you know. So then when it did happen and I was feeling like you know, it just I wasn't giving my whole self to it. Right. And that's my thing, like I I don't like forcing uh I don't like just don't like forcing creativity and um I, I, I don't think anything good comes of it. Um well, at least not for me. So Right. Mm. Um for this, it's just like, yeah, I mean, I feel I feel great to be able to be back doing this again because, you know, there was a part of me when I left that obviously thought that that might be it, you know? So to, to find myself all the way, you know, after all that, to be back here, you know, listening, we're about to play, I think, one of the best songs we've ever written. Yeah, that, I agree. Just as a person who just, like, literally lives and breathes singing and songwriting. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty good about it. Um, lots of bands I've interviewed have uh, stepped away and come back, and it's always nice to see them play again. Uh, very few come back with a song like this in their in, in that it works in their spirit. I think this is a, an amazing song. When I first heard it, I went, "All right, well they pulled that off," <laughs> which is not easy to do. <laughs> At least, yeah, Let's as far as I'm fire, concerned, we deliver. <laughs> yes, right. You put us in a put us in the high intensity situation. We deliver. <laughs> Just give like us, a fire. <laughs> give us the main. Give us the main stage at Reading Festival. We're delivering. Can you give us the much music what video? Is <laughs> <laughs> can you play Coachella next year so we can have a rock band on stage at Coachella? Yeah. Oh, can we do that? George is all over that. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it. Can I'm we do it? it? I really you guys aren't even coming. I'm going to do it by myself. Speaking right now, it seems like he's already got a big New plan. Right. Say George <laughs> will be at Coachella. <laughs> I need you. All right, so uh, last question. Um, I know you sort of you said yes and no, yes and no, but you do have other bits of songs and schedules aside. Are you going to make a record? Are you going to go on the road again? Like, what's the, or is this just like a couple here and there? I think what we'll do is, is it's the reason why we wanted to put this song out just like this is because we we wrote it, we recorded it, we thought it ruled, and we ha we can do that. Yeah. So I think what we'll do is just try to keep working on the new songs that we're working on, and when we get them 
to the point where we get them, we'll record them and put them out. And that's yeah. it. You don't need an album. Because it's 2019 it. and we can do whatever we want. We, yeah. we don't have any label constraints or anything. Like It's like, to be honest, I think we're in like this position that we would have loved to have been in from the beginning. Yeah. So now sure. we can kind of just yeah. do this thing and make sure, obviously the songs have to be, yeah. we have to feel as good about them as this one. Yeah. And but I, I would say absolutely. I think, be, I think we're most, capable of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Though, and you're right. Making stuff that we're... Yeah. Exactly. You, you don't need a record. good about it. You just need songs. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants... Everybody wants to hear us play the first record front to back anyways. <laughs> which we're not going to do. We're not going to no. do it. But you're going to play some of the songs and then yes, we're we grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for playing my living room. This is going to bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. Thanks Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you.